Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for another time to be alive, Jesus. Just It is so much trouble in the world, but we know, Father God, that we depend on you, Jesus. We give it back to you, Father. I pray, Father God, that this word tonight, that your message, complete my message. Holy Spirit, I give myself back to you. I give, Father God, all that I know, Father God, back to you. And I pray that you lead this study tonight. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. You're always enough. And I thank you for every person that is watching, Jesus. I plead the blood of Yahshua completely over their mind, body, souls, and spirit. Touch them like never before, in Jesus' name. Welcome back, brothers and sisters, kings, queens, all over the earth. We want to thank you, uh, wherever you may be at. And I know there's so much going on in terms of troubles. And when we think of troubles, we just can turn on the news. You can see trouble all over this place. And the today's title of our message is called How to Escape the World's Troubles. James 5, 13 says, Is anyone among you in trouble? Let them pray. Prayer is a tool that God gives us in times of trouble. So if any one of you are in trouble, my first charge to you is pray. And then if you uh, want the second charge is pray harder. It makes us trust Father God instead of self-sufficiency when we, when we pray. When you pray with faith to God, he is able to fight all your battles. Battles that you know of and battles that you cannot see. Some of you might be going through a bitter, bad divorce or have you just been diagnosed with an incurable disease? My God. Have you just lost a loved one? Or does trouble just seem to follow you everywhere you go? Let us pray. Let's look at how Paul and Barnabas dealt with overcoming trouble. Acts 14, 21 through 23 uh, we're going to get in that text, but before I go there, I want to uh, give a background of what's going on before we get into this verse. Paul and Barnabas have both been preaching and healing people in a number of cities, and in certain cities, they get uh, mixed reviews. In most cities, they get mixed reviews. You got cities where they go to, and they want to give them like burnt offerings, and they want to just you know, treat them like they are from, you know, uh, uh, heaven, straight from heaven. Then they go to another part of the city and Paul gets stoned, dragged out of the city. And they thought he was dead. They, so they really just beat him to, almost to death. Disciples had to go around them and uh, go back into the city and do it again. <laughs> so now let's pick up in verses 21 through 23. It says they preached the gospel in Derby and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch. It says strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Paul and Barnabas uh, appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. Paul and Barnabas were totally committed to prayer, fasting, and the Lord. In the midst of being stoned, ran out of cities, and almost killed, Paul was able to overcome troubles of his time and still be able to strengthen and encourage the disciples. Paul said, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Just like I said in one of my last messages, if it was easy to walk this Christian life, everybody would be doing it. And I'm going to tell you like this. It is much sweeter on this side, despite what we go through as disciples of Christ, despite the hardships, despite losing loved ones, it is still sweet on this side. 
Paul and Barnabas uh, had elders appointed uh, to these churches, to these uh, disciples, as well as having a positive man mental attitude and leadership, Paul and Barnabas uh, stayed constant in prayer and fasting. So in times of need and times of trouble, we have to stay constant in prayer, brothers and sisters. We have to stay constant in fasting. We have to stay constant in our Bible studies even. Paul also gives us a major key to overcoming and escaping the world's trouble. In 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, watch this. For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. So we don't have carnal weapons. We don't have worldly weapons or physical weapons. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to, dis to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Hallelujah. This is power in prayer. This is our power that we have in prayer and authority that Jesus Christ has given us to exercise the power, which comes when we take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. What does that mean? Take, make your thought captive. It's amazing that God gave me this scripture and I'm using it because he gave this scripture to me just a while ago. I was in my bed and I was tired. I just came from work and I wanted to go to sleep, but I knew I still had to stay on course with doing the message tonight. So God say, take my thought, take your thought, make it obedient. And in other words, I had to control my thought. I had to control it and not let my thought control me. And I must make sure that my thought was lined up with God's will. You see, we must replace negative fleshly and sinful thoughts with positive spiritual and holy thoughts. So when you know the good that you ought to do and you don't do it, you sin. So when we were younger, we thought like a kid. Now, as we get older, we think like a spiritual man or a spiritual woman. And in prayer, and what we do is we ask God to give us the power to reject the negative thought. Amen. Because there's so much negativity that hits us throughout the day. As soon as we wake up, oh man, here I go. I gotta, I'm not a morning person. You done already talked yourself out of being positive. So you have to train that thought and reject that negative thought and make it positive. You have to strengthen yourself to no longer live like that. You have to strengthen your mindset to no longer think like that. And then you have to ask God to replace the lie that you heard, right? The lie that you was told maybe your whole life with God's truth. We got to replace these lies with truth. So remember brothers and sisters, this is, this is a race that is not a sprint. It's not. We have to continue to move forward because this race is a marathon, one foot in front of the next. Keep chugging away. I want you to keep trusting God. Keep on the whole armor. Stay holy. Stay alert. Stay sanctified until you can reach God's throne. Because we've got to give an account. 